Coach, I asked Coach Allen this too. When, when you have an offensive coordinator that's got kind of an established style, Coach Longo's kind of done what he's done for mm -hmm. a really long time. But then you've got maybe some personnel changes, like the quarterback you can be confident in, some personnel changes you might not know, like Braylon Allen may play, may not. Just what's the balance of, I guess, preparing for scheme when you've got a good comfort level with what that's going to look like versus players within that scheme where maybe there's a couple key pieces that might be there, might not. Yeah, for sure. I think you just go back to what does the film show you, right? So you have a system. You try to dive into a system and understand it. Then you also see who are the pieces of the system, right? And what do they do best? And you say, okay, how, how could those be highlighted? You know, and, um, you know, if they don't have a guy, how does that change things from that standpoint? But obviously, Coach Longo's done a really good job at, at a bunch of different places and got a lot of respect for him. And I think it starts with his system from there. But definitely, what, you know, we study the personnel and how they function best. Uh, Matt, you're right. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jordan Shaw got. First time, uh, first playing time this past week. Now, you don't coach his specific position, but as a DB coach, you're working with Coach Shelby a lot. What have you seen from him? What do you like about him as a player and his upside? Yeah, he's done a great job. Um, to me, it starts with the mentality. He has that. You know, so for any young guy to be able to step up in a big spot, you know, we had seen that develop, you know, over weeks and say, hey, we got to get him, you know, inserted in this role, you know, and uh, obviously with. Noah down, we made a decision, you know, from a packaging standpoint to be able to put him into, you know, some slot corner type roles and things like that. And, you know, he's got toughness to be able to blitz and you're able to see that. But it's mentality to me. It starts with that. He has skills, but it's mentality. With Kobe Miner, I think PFF has him at 11 receptions allowed for the entire season. I think one against Penn State, zero last week. Um, How do you kind of evaluate his overall play so far this year? Yeah, he's done a good job. Coach Shelby's done a great job, you know, with him. And uh, he's a guy that's progressed, you know, when I first came here in the spring, was able to see the talent that he had. And uh, to me, he's gotten more comfortable in our system and, and done a really good job. Matt, uh, what, what's the t what was the turnaround? What, what happened this week in comparison to the previous two or three weeks with this football team on the defensive side of the ball, there was more discipline. There was a there was an effort level that was different. It seemed like to me. Yeah, discipline, consistency, pulling guys up to an expectation level. You know, you've seen the flashes of it, but it was hey, we're doing it every single play. So our messaging to the guys was one play. That's it. One play. Put the ball down. How hard are you going to fight on one play to do your job for your brothers? You know, that was that was our mentality for the game, right? And then no matter what happens, the dust settles. One play. Let's do it again. Right? So we just simple. Here's what we're going to do. Here's our attack plan. Let's go get them. Andre, yeah, Andre Carter played a lot more kind of inside uh, more than he had the rest of the season, just snaps wise. Um, was that something you like? I want to take advantage of him against Penn State or see some do moving forward. And with his season as a whole, sack numbers aren't there, but pressures, you know, have been very disruptive. How have you kind of evaluated his whole body? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, he's a big, strong guy, right? So we look at matchups every single week and where we can best utilize his skill set. Um, some packages, he's on the edge. Some packages, he's on the inside, right? So we've had a little bit of that all year. But yeah, then each week we say, okay, this is our favorite attack to be able to do that. So um, we bumped him in and, and he did a good job there. He's got skills at both places. He's a disruptive guy. I think you've seen that consistently from that standpoint, you know. Um, Sacks are obviously important. You know, they're huge havoc plays, but you're able to affect the passer without necessarily stats that show up at times too, right? So being around the quarterback, harassing a quarterback, I think that, you know, he's done a good job from that standpoint. Coach, I realize that given the defensive performance, the one that probably sticks in your head is the, is the late touchdown that at the end of the game. What did you kind of see on film looking back on that play that, that might have led to that? Yeah, what keeps me up always is do you put your guys in best positions to – Go win a game there, you know, and uh, I wish that I could put us in a better position, you know, a more protected position in, in that role. Three minutes left, three timeouts, you know, their full offense available at that time. They just ran the ball for 10 yards against us and, um, you know, had a 50 50 call in that situation and, and had an unprotected guy down the field. And, you know, I wear every bit of that and, uh, you know, we'll work hard to put us in the best position always. I guess this is a bit more of a philosophical question, but going back to talking about sacks versus pressures in, in modern football when you know passing offenses are designed to move the ball so quickly mm -hmm. d do you almost talk to guys about pressures the same way you talk and hurries the same way you talk about sacks in the sense that maybe it's not quite as conventional of a statistic but you know you're just not going to maybe have as much time mm -hmm. for the pass rush to get home sometimes it is just about getting a guy off his spot or just getting him sped up 
Yeah, so we talk about affecting the quarterback in totality, right, and, and rush and coverage working together. And there's times that you could play a max coverage and the quarterback has to pat the ball and then a sack may happen there. Or there's a time that you bring a pressure and the ball has to come out really fast. You know, so it may not be a sack on the stat book from there, but you've affected the quarterback, right? So uh, we talk about coverage disguise the same way. You know, do we do a good job from that standpoint? standpoint and then a quarterback has to catch a ball and then think you know what I mean so all of that goes under that umbrella of how we affect a quarterback and um, yeah it's not just stats from that standpoint it's about what's the end result in the production level with Anthony Jones I believe he played a, a new high in snaps on Saturday mm -hmm. um, have you kind of seen him ascend throughout the year and, and what's next for him yeah, he's a good football player. He plays multiple positions. You know, he plays our wolf position in some of our heavier packages, which we've got a bunch of, you know, two tights in that game against Penn State. And uh, he's also able to play our, you know, our bull position. He has flexibility. You see his physicality at the point of contact. Um, but no, I'm, I've been pleased with his progress and expect a, a high level to continue. To see Josh Sanguinetti come up with a big interception. I mean, Allard never thrown an interception at the college level. I mean, just, you know, how happy were you for him to see him come up with a play like that? Yeah, it was great for him to be able to, you know, step up in a big spot right there and, and make a game-changing play in that moment, you know. And then obviously it's on us to go finish it and capitalize uh, with the tie game. But I was, you know, really happy for him. He's, he's worked really hard and, you know, been a guy that's obviously produced, you know, with, you know, from a ball production standpoint a bunch throughout his career. Thanks, guys. Thank